Today, we're wrapping up this series that we've been in for the past three weeks and, and talking about that God is with us. Like Pastor Chris has said for a few weeks that, that this time that should be celebrating and joyful, it's also a reminder of the heartbreaks and, and the loneliness and a lot of depression and even more suicides than any other time of the year. And that's what we believe this is a breath of fresh air from God to remind all of us who he is. That he gave us Emmanuel. God is with us. And the first week Pastor Chris talked about God the Son is with us. Last week God the Father. And today we say this one. The God is with us. He's the Holy Spirit. And we're going to talk about that. I want to step right into it and start with the scripture that really show us the whole trinity. And we, we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14. It's, it's when that letter is wrapped up and, and Paul is really like highlighting the trinity. And it says here, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the what? The fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with y'all. He said y'all. I mean we're in Texas, all right? Be with y'all. He is the God with us. He wants to be with us all the time. And I love how he's highlighting like one side of each person in the Trinity. Just think about it. The grace of Jesus. Without the grace of Jesus, we will all go to hell. That is the fact. I mean, we need his grace in our lives. But then we see the love of God. The love of God. Without the love of God, Jesus would never have been sent in the first place. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Listen, it's like the highlight of the people, the persons in, in the Trinity. The grace of Jesus and, and the love of God. So what about the Holy Spirit? The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Should we just brush that under the rug and be like, well, that's not as important. I believe it's equally important to have that with the rest of them. So listen, the Holy Spirit, the, the challenge we have sometimes with the Holy Spirit is that a lot of Christians, they're looking for the works of the Holy Spirit. But they are not looking to know Him. Because a lot of people, they believe that, that you can't get to know Him because they don't understand He's a person. We treat Him sometimes like an, like an it or this mysterious force like in Star Wars. It's just, if you were driving early this morning, the, the Austin fog here, right? It's like something mysterious. No, listen, He's not mysterious in that way. He is a person. Because you cannot have fellowship with an it. And you cannot have fellowship with someone that is millions of miles away. He is God with us. Every time you feel the presence of God, every time you feel that peace on the inside, the joy from the Lord, it's the Holy Spirit working in you and working with you. He's beautiful. He's powerful. He's gracious. And I believe today that He's inviting us, all of us, to get to know Him a little bit more. So I want to show you three Three things today that we can get to know the Holy Spirit by. Number one, He will help you. Everyone say help. help. We need some help in life, right? God never intended for you to try to figure out life alone. He wants to help you. He wants to be the God with you. Not by your own understanding or strength alone, but with His help. So listen to what Jesus says in John 14. As He's introducing now to the disciples the Holy Spirit. And He's saying this. Jesus says, I will ask the Father. And he will give you another what? Helper. Another helper to be with you forever. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it's not looking for him and doesn't know him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. So Jesus is introducing the Holy Spirit by this name. Another helper. And I, I think that's awesome because... If he says there will be another helper, that implies that it was the first helper in the first place, all right? So, so there's another helper to take the first helper's place. So who is this mysterious first helper? It's not mystery. It was Jesus himself. He's talking to the disciples. And when you read the Bible, you're going to find out that the disciples, they could not do anything without Jesus. They were so dependent on him in everything. Where to go? Jesus told them. What to say? How to behave? How to speak? I mean, everything, Jesus was teaching them everything, explaining things to them. Jesus even helped them to pay their taxes. Come on, somebody. You need that in your life. Some of you are like, oh, God, I need your help to pay my taxes as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's in the Bible. It's right there. Pray. All right. So Jesus is saying now, he was their helper. He was their counselor. He's been their leader for so long. So what Jesus is saying now, just like I've been your helper, there will be now another helper that will help you. 
And now this is getting very interesting because in, in the original language which this, this is written in the New Testament, it's written as Greek. And Greek has two words for another. And the first word you can use is heteros. And heteros means another of a different kind. And then you have the word alos. And alos means another of the same kind. So example is this. If, if I give you an apple and you eat it and you're still hungry and I ask you, do you want another fruit? I can give you a banana. I can give you an orange. I can give you a pear because I just said another fruit. If I say, do you want a heteros fruit? I give you whatever fruit I have available. But if I would say in Greek, do you want an alos fruit? I can only give you an apple. I can only give you another of the same kind that you already have, that you are familiar with, that you know all about. So now guess what word in Greek Jesus is using here. He's saying, I will pray to the Father and He will send you an alos helper. Uh, he will send you a, a helper of the same kind like you're used to. So in other words, the same way the disciples were dependent on Jesus in everything they did. That is what Jesus is saying. We need to be dependent on the Holy Spirit in the same way. Or oh, let, me, let me show you this way, all right? If, if you read the gospel, sometimes I'm, I'm so curious about the things that aren't written in the, in the gospel, all right? I'm thinking, about, I'm thinking about all the bonfires they made late at night where they were out walking from town to town and village to village. I'm like, I wish I could have been there. I would, would love to sit there among the other disciples and just listening to Jesus, learning from Jesus and, and, and leaning in and laughing together with them, having that fellowship with Jesus and the other disciples. And we think about, I wish I would have been there. No, listen, that is what Jesus is saying. That same kind of, of fellowship is what He is now he welcoming us to have again, another of the same kind with the Holy Spirit. So in other words, what Jesus is saying is here, disciples, listen, the same relationship you've had with me for three and a half years, dependent on me and asking me questions and going where I'm going, the same relationship I'm inviting you to have with the Holy Spirit. Identical, the same. And that is fascinating and welcoming into all of us today. That that's the relationship we ought to have with the Holy Spirit. The problem is... That he's the most ignored person in churches sometimes and in our lives. Just imagine Peter sitting around that fire and, and his head is just all over the place. He's not listening to anything that, that Jesus is saying. All of a sudden he's standing up and he's starting to walk away. And the other disciples are like, Peter, where are you going? Well, I feel like I, I, I should go to Capernaum. And they're like, no. Like Jesus said that we are going to, to Jericho tomorrow. Yeah, but I feel like I, I, I want to go there. Uh, and then he will walk out and he will walk out of the Gospels. He will never have returned, right? Because he was dependent. He was led by Jesus. And the same way we ought to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit in that way. Ask him questions. Speak to him. Allow him to help you. Have a fellowship. Have that relationship with him in your life. And I love how this ends. He dwells with you. And he will be in you. Point number two today. He lives in you. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says this. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that the, and God, God's spirit lives where? In you. The spirit of God lives inside of all believers. You are the temple of God. And listen, some people think that, that this might be a New Testament idea. It's really not. This has been God's plan since creation. Let me show you when he's creating Adam, it says this. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. So, so God is forming Adam out of the dust. And then I love this picture. He's leaning down. And he's breathing the breath of God into his nostrils. And he comes alive. The breath of God. The wind of God. It's the same word used for the spirit of God. So Adam was dead. All the way to God breathed His Spirit into Adam and He became alive. That's how He became alive. That's how He could have fellowship with God. That intimacy with God. Because God's presence, God's Spirit lived on His inside. Now then we know they fell in sin. And, 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 and that sin changed the Spirit of God away. God could not dwell where sin was dwelling. So fast forward now. Don't be, don't be sad because the Bible says here that everyone has sinned. Each and every one of us. 
and we've fallen short of the glory of God. We lost it. We lost God's life on the inside. It's God, God's spirit inside of us. But that's why Jesus came. So God loved the world that he sent his son to die for our sins. And in Jesus there is forgiveness for sins. And when we receive that forgiveness, when sin is moved away, God's spirit is again moving back in. As the original plan from the beginning. And we can now carry God's life on the inside again. That is why Jesus came to live for him. To be strengthened by him. To have intimate fellowship with him. And I love now. Listen. I'm going to show you something that you may never seen before. Because, because when Jesus died on the cross, he rose again. And the first time he meets with his disciples. It's one of those funny stories in the in the new testament he's there they're just confused they're locked in they're scared they don't know what's going on and jesus walks through all right and and he's like how do you how do you know he doesn't say that he says peace be with you and i believe he says that because they're terrified at that moment they're screaming they're like ah, what's going on he said peace peace be with you guys come on chill it's me and he shows him his nail mark hands and feet and and they recognize that he died on the cross he rose again and this is the first thing that happens now in john 20 he says then Jesus breathed on them and he said receive the Holy Spirit. So what he's doing now, he's reflecting what God did in creation. When Adam was dead and God breathed the breath of life, the Spirit of God into him and he became alive. Jesus is doing the same now. And when he's breathing the, the Spirit of God onto the disciples, guess what? They become spiritually alive. They become a temple of the Holy Spirit. Sin is now removed because he paid the price on the cross. And they can now be called sons and daughters of God. They can go and live with his presence on the inside and the bible says that the holy spirit is a seal it's a mark inside of you that will open heaven for you one day you belong to god because god's spirit lives in you so the holy spirit within prepares you for heaven you belong there your name is written in the book of life and you say yeah that's that's cool Daniel, but i'm still on earth yes you are because you're here for the purpose to make a difference for God and he is still your helper so let's look at the last point today number three his power upon you now the text we're about to read is is 40 days after Jesus met with the disciples for the first time and he breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit now Jesus is spending 40 days with them and this is the very last thing that he's saying to them before he's now taken back up to heaven so this is what Jesus said in Acts 1 and 8 but you will receive what? Power. Power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my Witness. witnesses. Telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So 40 days after he breathed on the disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Now he's been talking with them. You can read in Luke. You can read in Matthew. You can read in the book of Acts. He's saying, now wait here until you receive the Holy Spirit. And you might think like, listen, this is a little bit confusing. Did the Bible get it wrong? Did they receive the Holy Spirit then or later? Jesus, did you forget that you already told them that you received the Holy Spirit now again? No, no, no. He's not confused. But he's talking about two different experiences here. The first experience is salvation. The Holy Spirit on the inside. You're a temple of the Holy Spirit. You're ready for heaven. But now he's talking about a second experience. And he's saying now the Holy Spirit will come upon, upon you. Not just on the inside. But the Bible talks about this as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Be immersed of the Holy Spirit. Totally covered with the power of the Holy Spirit. So if the Holy Spirit on the inside was God's plan from the beginning. What about the Holy Spirit upon? Was that also part of God's plan? Yes sir, I'm glad you're asking. Look here. In Psalm chapter 8 when the psalmist is showing us the poetic view of creation. He says this. Yet you God. You made them, he's talking about humanity, you made them only a little lower than God. That means that, that humanity, we are the crown of creation. We're the most important part, the most valuable part of creation. You made a little lower than God and, and you did what? You crowned. You put a crown upon them. And other translation said, you clothe them with glory and honor. With doxa, with kabod, with the weight of God, with the presence of God, with the spirit of God, the power of God. You gave them in charge of everything you made, putting all things under their authority. In other words, it's saying, now I'm calling you to make a difference. 
I'm calling you to do this different. So, so from the beginning, God's plan was the Holy Spirit on the inside, but also to be crowned, to be clothed with His power, with His, with his weight, with His presence on the outside. It's been God's plan from the beginning. So if the Holy Spirit on the inside prepares you for heaven, the Holy Spirit upon you prepares you to make a difference here on earth today. And we need that power, I'm telling you. Jesus said, receive my power to be a witness. Not just to enjoy it for your own sake, but to make that difference for me. Be a witness with, for that, that you serve a supernatural God. Because we cannot create the supernatural in our own power. Be a witness of, of the way you live. Because I know without God's life, I cannot control my thoughts, my tongue, nothing. And I would be a bad witness. But with His power, I can be a good witness. Receive His power to read and understand the Word of God. Receive His power to pray. Receive His power to share the good news. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. The power of God upon us. Sometimes when you start talking about this, uh, and I met this person in my life, some believers will be a little bit frustrated, a little bit angry even. And, and then they, they told me in the past that, Daniel, if uh, you're talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, do you think you're better than me just because you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit? No, sir. Not at all. I do not. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, the power of God in my life will not make me better than you. The power of God, the baptism of the Holy Spirit will make me better than me. I know, and I'm the first to tell in this room, without His power, I would fail in everything I'm doing. Amen. Without His power upon my life, I could not live one day for Him and, and honor Him with my life. But with His power, with His clothes, with His crown, with His presence, with His help, nothing is impossible. Listen, Christmas Eve is coming up tomorrow and Tuesday. I have a suggestion. I have a, an encouragement. I have something to ask. Why don't we all, everyone in this room, everyone in Colleen, why don't we all ask God today for that power on our lives? Power to make a difference. Power to be a witness. And say, God, I want that. And then when we leave, we grab the last invite cards we have. And we pray over them. And we start handing them out where we live, to our loved ones, to our neighbors, to strangers. And believe that God will move. And that we pack both campuses for Christmas Eve services. There's no better time to reach the lost than Christmas Eve, I'm telling you. Or you might say about Daniel, I don't have that power. And I, I don't even know if I'm ready to receive it, if I'm good enough to have it. Yes, you are. Because it's not about you. So what do I do to receive that? I'm glad you're asking. Last scripture. Luke 11 says this. Your fathers. If you children ask for fish, do you give them a snake instead? If they ask you for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who? Those who? Those who? Yeah, it didn't say those who deserve, those who are good enough, those who never sinned, those who never made a mistake in their life, those who need that medal. No, no, no. Those who ask him. He's just one prayer away. His power on your life to make a difference and live a life as a witness for him. All we have to do is to ask him. So I believe with the help of the Holy Spirit, fellowship with him. Knowing that he lives on my inside, knowing his power is upon me, we're going to enter into the best year of our lives yet. Do you believe that with me? Yeah. Come on, let's give God a big hand for his word today. I want to ask right now for a moment if we can bow our head, close our eyes. And now I want to allow now the Holy Spirit to speak to you, make this person. Because I believe one of two or both of these things need to happen in all of us our lives today the first thing is that you may believe in God you Jesus is your Lord you live for him but you're missing that power in your life I want to encourage you ask for it today ask the father for that power in your life and then you take this step because every time in the New Testament when we see people clothed with that power it's because someone else also prayed over them and released that power so before you leave today I'm telling you you have time Stay a few extra minutes. Come down front as we're wrapping up service and ask our prayer team to pray with you for that power, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I also know you're sitting here and you might be missing that 
love on the inside, the presence of God, His, His Spirit on the inside. And the only reason why you're missing that right now is because you've never given your sin to God. And you may even say, no, listen, I've done too many bad things and, 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 and I don't think God is ready for me. I need to fix on things. No, listen, God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. That whoever believes in Jesus will not perish, will not go to hell, will not be lost, but have life eternity. So today, He gave the gift. Today we can receive that gift of forgiveness. And experience God's life moving in, into the inside. God's Spirit dwelling in you. You can have that fellowship with Him. So if you never asked Him to forgive you your sins before, today is your day. I will count to three. When I come to three, I want you to lift your hand and say, yes, that's me. I just want to know when you're sitting. I will not call you out or anywhere. I just want to know who I'm praying with. If you never prayed that prayer, never ask God to forgive your sins. So maybe you have in the past, but you've been walking away today. God is saying, come as you are. Come back, come home to me today. New fresh start, new beginning. He's calling out of love. If you need to come back to Him, you lift your hand as well. Get that hand ready. No fear, no hesitation. God is for you today. One, make that hand ready. Two, three, lift it up right now. Thank you. Hands are going up everywhere. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Front to back, side to side. Thank you. I'm so proud of all of you. Take that hand now, place it on your heart. Because that's where sin will be removed. And that's where the Holy Spirit will move in right here and right now. And I want to lead you in a prayer. And I'm asking the whole church, let's just help those who are praying this for the first time today. Let's all pray out loud and clear. Let's say together, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me so that I can live for you. Forgive me of my sin. Give me a fresh start. A new beginning. Fill me with your life, with your spirit, with your purpose. Give me the strength to live my life for you from today and forever. In Jesus' name, amen.